Welcome back to Game Programming with Unity. This is Nicholas, and in this section here, what I want to do is show you a little bit more about our UI uh, or menu system. Now, it's a pretty complex system, and we're not going to get into the real particulars of it, but you need to be aware of where the tools are to create it, how the system is rendered to the screen, and how it references position points, and all the different types of interactive elements that you can create. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to click on Game Object. I've created a new scene here. And in that new scene, what I want to do is create a game object. And I'm going to go to my UI here. And let's just create what's called a panel. A panel is just an image, you know, an image that's being rendered to screen. And you can look and see that not only did it create a panel, but it created this thing called a canvas. Now let's talk a little bit about a canvas. What is a canvas? Well, a canvas is part of the UI rendering system it bases its information on the camera screen pixels as opposed to a world system with a 3D object which would render it in a 3D engine. This is going to create uh, a screen to pixel uh, rendering which is going to be based on the camera you're looking through. So let's just click on our canvas here and it's going to ask us here we have three types of, of, of spaces or rendering styles for our for our panel in our canvas. We have the screen space overlay, screen space camera, or world space. Now overlay is going to be based on the resolution of your scene. Camera is going to be based on a specific camera. And I usually like to use the camera because we know that it will be attached to a single camera. And every time you look through that camera, you'll see that interface. So I'm going to choose here the render camera. What camera are we going to base this on? And I'm going to choose my main camera here. And now you can see I'm looking over here through my main camera, and let's just choose a different resolution. So right here what I'm doing is I'm choosing a resolution or an aspect ratio. And if you notice, as I change my camera's aspect ratio, the aspect ratio of my panel changes. Why is that? Because the canvas is basing its pixel information on the camera's ratio. So whatever ratio I have the camera, this panel is going to resize it itself to, which is really convenient because now I can create a new panel. So let's just go to game object. Let's create a UI and once I have the canvas selected, it should always drop this UI under and let's create a button here. There we go. It always drops it under the, the existing canvas. So now this tool up here, which we haven't looked at yet, instead of being a move or rotate or scale. This tool is our canvas, our 2D element. So I can really change this image or this button. And you can see it, it'll line it up. It has some nice snap tools and guide tools for me so I can center it perfectly. You can see that I've created this button and I can move it around in the 2D space of the canvas while still having a completely 3D world. So if I create a game object, which is a cube, and let's move it into the camera, sp camera space. There we go. Sometimes you gotta move around a little bit just to see how the 3D world or the 3D object you're creating is going to be affected by the 2D canvas. So you can see I have a 3D object in my scene, and the scene is fully 3D, but this canvas here, this canvas is attached to my camera. So no matter what I do with my camera, the canvas does not change in size. So you can see the 3D object here changes, but the 2D object does not. Which means that the pixels of the canvas here and the UI are constantly readjusting themselves to the uh, transforms of the camera. And that's really important because no matter what happens to the camera, you want the UI, let's move this over to the side here, you want the UI to remain the same size. The UI is not a world UI, it's a camera space based UI. So all the pieces of this canvas are laid uh, on top of one another as a flat panel in front of that camera and never change perspective based on the movements of that camera. It's always going to be exactly like you see it here. Even though I can move that camera around and the 3D elements will drastically change how they are seen and rendered and their perspective, but the 2D elements will not change. 